In this video, we'll look at two more examples where we have a combination of exponent rules taking place. So let's start with number one, which I've enlarged over here. So we're going to start off with this part here. So this minus, well, you can think of that as minus one and minus one to the power of two. Well, it means minus one times by minus one. That's what to the power of two means. Okay, and so that's going to end up giving us a positive 1, because a minus and a minus is a positive. Then this x over here has an exponent of 1, and so the exponent rule says that we should multiply those two numbers, and so that's going to give us x to the power of 2, and the same for the y, and so that's going to give us y to the power of 2. So moving on to this next section, which is over here, now, many people will say 3 to the power of 3 is 27. That is correct. But if you want to stick to the exponent rules, then this 3 currently has an exponent of 1. And so 1 times 3 is 3. So that's just going to be 3 to the power of 3. And then you could change that to 27 if you want. For the x, well, there's just a 1 over here. So it's going to be 1 times 3. And so that's going to be x to the power of 3. And the same for the y. Now we can move down to the bottom where we can think of this 3 as having an exponent of 1, and so 1 times 2 is 2. You could also say 9 if you wanted to. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. Then this x to the power of minus 1, well, all you do is you multiply it with the 2, and so that's going to give you x to the minus 2. And then the y currently has an exponent of 1, and so 1 times 2 is going to give us y to the power of 2. Now what we can do is combine vertically. I'm going to do the th threes first, so that's going to be this one over here and this one over here. Now, the exponent rule says that when the bases are the same, in which case they are, they both have a 3, what should we do at the exponents? Well, you should minus them, but you shouldn't cross out the 3, so it's going to be 3 to the power of 1 at the top, because it's 3 minus 2. Then we're going to look at the x's over here. Well, in fact, I didn't spot it, and maybe some of you at home spotted it. We can still put these x's at the top together. Okay, so let's do that first. And so that's going to give us x to the power of 5. And then we can put these y's together over here. And so that's going to give us y to the power of 5. Remember when the exponents or when the bases are the same, and they're next to each other like that, then you add the exponents. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just put the x minus 2 and the y2 at the bottom. So now, We've got, at the top, we've got an x, and at the bottom, we've got an x. Now, can you remember what we do at the exponents? Well, we minus them, right? So it's going to be, and then this 3 we've already taken care of. So it's going to be 3x, and then it's going to be 5 minus minus 2, because this over here is already a minus 2. And a minus and a minus is a plus, so that's going to become 5 plus 2, which is 7. And so that's going to give us x to the power of 7. Then for the y's, you're going to say 5 minus 2, and so that's going to be y to the power of 3. And so moving on to number 2, which I've enlarged over here. This minus 2, well, we can't really do anything with it. I mean, you could multiply it with that 2 over there. And so if we did do that, well, those are just normal numbers. So in fact, let's do that. That's going to be minus 2 times 2. Uh, that's just going to give us minus 4. If you want, you could also treat the negative as its own little thing. And so there's only one negative, so the whole answer will be a minus. Then we need to do this part over here. And so remember, this exponent with the x is currently it's a 1. And so we multiply these over here, and so that's going to give us x to the power of 2 and y to the power of 2. And then this 2 over here has already been used up, so we're just going to say x squared. Then at the bottom, we know that we have to multiply those. And so minus 1 times minus 1 is just 1. So it's going to be x to the power of 1. And then the y, well, this y currently has an exponent of 1. And so if you multiply those, you end up with minus 1. At the top, we see that there is a x and another x. And so what should we do with the exponents? Well, remember, we add these exponents, and so we have minus 4, x to the power of 4, and y to the power of 2. And at the bottom, we just have x to the power of 1, and y to the power of minus 1. 
Now we can combine vertically where we see there's an x here and an x here. Can you remember what to do with the exponents? Well, you minus, and so 4 minus 1 is 3. And so we're going to end up with minus 4 x to the power of 3. And then if we look at the y's, well, we have to minus their exponents, but be careful now because it's 2 minus, but now this is already a minus, so it's going to be like that. And then this minus and this minus becomes a plus, and so we end up with y to the power of 3.